Today, we'll be covering animators for the Playdate SDK. Animators are lightweight objects that can be used to animate all sorts of different things. Let's jump right into it. The simplest animator you can make is just between two values. We can do that by calling playdate.graphics.animator.new. The first argument is the duration in milliseconds. The second argument is the start value and the third is the end value. We can get the current value of the animator by using the current value method. Let's print the value of the animator. You'll notice that even when the animator has reached its final value, it doesn't disappear. So you can keep on accessing it. We can check if the animation has ended using the ended method. Let me write some code to check if the animator has ended first before we print the value. One nice thing about animators is the ended method doesn't return true unless current value has been called first to make sure you're able to get the last value of the animator. So it's fine to check if the animator has ended before you grab the current value. If we check the output of this, you'll see that it stops at 200. But you'll also notice that the numbers in between are not integers. That's because we're getting the value of the animator every frame, and the frame rate won't necessarily cleanly line up with the rate the animator is changing at. This works great for visual animations, as that will translate into smooth movement. But if you're using animators to keep track of something numerical, you might want to round the resulting value. You can set the repeat count property to have the animator repeat. A value of zero will play the animation once. The documentation mentions that a repeat count of one will play the animation twice, but in some situations, I found that it only plays it once, so be aware of that. You can increase the repeat count to play it as many times as you need. A repeat count of negative one will repeat forever. The animator also has an optional fourth parameter that is an easing function. An easing function is a special function that helps you specify the rate of change over time. Here's an example. We'll have two animators, one that takes in the easing function in, out, cubic, and another that we don't pass anything into, which defaults to a linear function. I've also created a small class that creates a ball sprite, which looks like this. Using it, I make two ball sprites. We'll use the values of the animators as x values to move the balls to, which looks like this. If I run this, you'll see the difference. The bottom one has a stiff linear movement, while the top one has a natural smooth movement. In real life, things rarely move linearly, so usually eased movement looks a lot better. You'll see that in this title sequence, I've used animators with easing functions for each individual element. Also for this transition, I've used an eased animator to adjust the radius of the circle. You can use this website, easings.net, to explore all the different easing functions. The Playdate SDK documentation lists all the easing functions available to use. We can delay the start of the animation by using a fifth argument, start time offset. If we offset the time of one of these animators, you can see that the ball waits a bit before moving. Back to the title screen example. All of these animators were created at the same time, but I just used the start time offset to delay the animations to have things appear sequentially. Numbers aren't the only thing you can animate. You can animate along a geometry object as well. Let's create a line segment. I'll make it go from the top left of the screen to the bottom right. We can just pass that line segment in as opposed to the starting and ending values. I'll use the outbounce easing function as an example. When we call the current value method on an animator that is animating along a geometry, it returns a geometry point object instead. We can pass that directly into the moveTo function to move the sprite to that point. Here's what that looks like. Here's another example of animating along an arc. It's also possible to combine a series of geometry paths into one animator. I'll make three different geometry objects, a line, an arc, and a polygon. Then we can create three arrays. The first one will be the geometries in order. The second will be the durations we want each part to animate. And the last is the easing function we want for each part. We can use all of those to create an animator object. Then you can see that the ball follows this complex path. You can see how we can use this to create advanced animations. Subscribe to see more Playdate content, and thanks for watching.